Ten years ago, mobile telephones were less than sophisticated devices. They were designed to do one thing, talk to each other. Today's latest models, in contrast, are elegantly shaped pocket computers. Current handsets may have a color screen and built-in camera in addition to being a telephone. Some phones designed for the business market can send and receive email messages and have tiny keyboards. Others, aimed at outdoor types, have built-in torches satellite positioning functions, high-resolution cameras with flash and zoom, and the ability to record and play video clips. Over half a billion mobile phones are sold each year. Sales, in part, are being driven by the growth in subscribers from the developing world, mainly China. In the developed world, where markets are so saturated that most adults already carry a mobile phone, existing subscribers are switching in doves to today's more advanced models. Meanwhile, the number of mobile phones in existence, currently 1.4 billion, overtook fixed line phones last year. The mobile phone business now sits at the intersection of three vast moving industries – communications, computer and consumer electronics. Indeed, it is the best selling device in each of these categories. Consequently, the firms that have historically dominated the industry – large specialized firms like Nokia and Motorola – now face a host of new challenges as well as opportunities. The desire for ownership of each mobile phone subscriber poses another threat to the handset makers, as mobile network operators seek to promote their own brands and differentiate themselves from their rivals. The result is a battle for a global market worth $70 billion. Manufacturing a mobile phone used to be so difficult that it became the province of just a few specialized companies. Then, since the handsets had to be manufactured in large quantities, there were problems of running an efficient manufacturing process and complex supply chain, as well as marketing the finished product to a mass consumer market. Furthermore, a company could not just make handsets. To be taken seriously by the mobile phone network operators and ensure everything worked properly, it also had to manufacture the much larger and more complex base stations that are used to provide mobile phone coverage. The combination of these requirements meant that the industry came to be dominated by large, vertically integrated companies such as Nokia, Motorola and Ericsson. Manufacturing can be outsourced to an electronic manufacturing services firm, EMS. Some of these firms have started to design as well as build handsets. These original design manufacturers, ODMs, sell their finished product to other firms, which in turn sell them under their own brand name. The irony of the situation for the ODMs is that their biggest customers are the handset makers. Arima, for example, makes phones for Sony Ericsson, while BenQ and Compel make several phones for Motorola. Siemens, Toshiba and Panasonic also rely on ODMs to produce their phones. Nordstream, a Swedish consultancy, predicts that ODMs will account for over 30% of total handset manufacturing by 2007, just 9% in 2006. There is now a potential shift away from the traditional vertical industry. Being able to design radio chips is less important than it used to be. So is owning manufacturing capacity or making all your own software. So the existing manufacturers have shifted towards using off-the-shelf chips and software to increasing their use of outsource manufacturing in the form of ODMs and EMS firms. Motorola and Sony Ericsson now outsource over 30% of their manufacturing and neither firm designs its own radio chips any longer. Siemens has taken a similar approach, mixing in-house products with ODM handsets. Nokia, however, exists on sheer size. Its market share is around 42% and thus it means that it can compete in every layer from chip design to branding. The company relies less on outsourcing than its major rivals, using it to respond to variations in demand and to benchmark the efficiency of its own manufacturing. In the mobile handset market, Nokia is the company with the most to lose. It has become so powerful that competitors are eager to bring it down. As the industry has expanded and developed into what it is today, Nokia is in a relatively weak position in many ways, as it is not protected by the ownership of proprietary technology. Nokia is however attempting to diversify, with its move into mobile gaming with its N-Gage handset. 
Continuing to develop leading edge technologies may be one way out of a potentially growing and damaging commodity status within the mobile handset market. As the market continues to grow, coupled with the seismic shift occurring within the industry and Nokia's massive market share advantage, it appears there is only one way for this company to go.